Hello there. It's time for another episode of Orange Truth Archetypes. Now, this episode, we'll once again be looking at the TV show, Sherlock. Specifically, on this episode, we'll be looking at Dr. John Hamish Watson. I'll analyze his character traits and personality, and based entirely on my more or less completely unqualified opinion, assigning him his specific archetype. Let's get started. We start with the ruler archetype. As we know, John is the soldier, so he's used to taking orders and following the rules. However, as we saw in a study in Pink, he is fine breaking the rules when under drastic circumstances. However, he also lectures Sherlock quite often on social rules and proper etiquette. However, John is usually the butt of the joke. Yes, if I wanted poetry, I'd read John's emails to his girlfriends much funnier. And is rarely in a position of power. And while he does value and promote the safety and security of his family, he also needs his fix for the thrill of the chase just like Sherlock does. And unfortunately, this has often cost him many relationships. You're a great boyfriend. Okay, that's good. I mean, I always thought I was great. Now Sherlock Holmes is a very lucky man. Well, I wouldn't say he's unconfident. He's often put down by others around them, particularly Sherlock, and he's rarely in control of what's going on around him. In other words, even though he truly believes in following the rules, his willingness to break them and lack of ever really being in control tells me that John is not the ruler. Secondly, we have the Jester archetype. The Jester is the crazy and impulsive genius that likes being in the spotlight. Unfortunately, I think John gets washed out in the spotlight and prefers being a face in the crowd. He likes it when there is order and structure, but he also knows that when Sherlock is involved, this is rarely the case. However, while he is the one that people are usually making fun of, You envy me. Your mind is so placid, straightforward, barely used. He's not known for comical retaliation. I always hear bunch me in the face when you're speaking, but it's usually subtext. Oh He's also constantly put in situations that he is not well equipped for, causing him to not have the highest opinion of himself in terms of his intellect. And especially when Mary Seeger came out, he pretty much came to the conclusion that he has little to no control over his life. However, he constantly butts heads with Sherlock over what is right and wrong, which shows that he is not the best at viewing things from other people's perspectives. So once again, I don't think this R-type is a very fitting one for John. But this one might be. The Everyman. The archetype that really just needs a friend. And it was John that actually brought about the series because he was looking for someone to share a flat with. And he was very quick to jump into all the chaos that comes with Sherlock. Mm, and since yesterday you've moved in with him and now you're solving crimes together. Might we expect a happy announcement by the end of the week? And one point that I would like to bring up is that John is not just a doctor and a soldier. He's also a storyteller. Time you woke up, Sherlock. I'm a storyteller. I know when I'm in one. He documents the adventures of his and Sherlock's adventures in his books and in his blog, and is more of an onlooker recording the adventures of another. He accepts his role as a sidekick in the story, and feels good when he is useful to the protagonist. He is a hard-working and honest man, as well as kind-hearted and loyal, making this archetype quite appropriate for him. Next up is the caregiver. Now, I don't really think there's anyone else in the series that cares more than John Watson. For starters, he's a father, so he has that natural paternal instinct. But even before Rosie came along, he had that natural need to protect. As he mentioned often, he was a doctor during the war, and afterwards, he tried to continue his practice. Unfortunately, when it came to his love life, he often fell short of caring for his love interest. He struggled balancing his love life with his relationship with Sherlock Holmes. But this just shows that while he spreads himself too thin, he does want to give care to everyone possible. This again, it favors the caregiver archetype, because John is self-sacrificing, He's a man that can't turn a blind eye if something goes wrong, making this archetype a very fitting one for Dr. John Watson. And now it's time for the hero archetype. Now, John might not be the main character of this story, but he does have a lot of hero qualities. One scene that really shows this is when his neighbor 
who he clearly barely knows, has a son who is in drug trouble, and while he is just being neighborly, he selflessly goes into the drug den to rescue him. He always has to fix things, and can't resist solving the problem and helping where it can. The hero also gets their strength from others, and encourages them to succeed. And John really enjoys helping Sherlock solve his mysteries. Plus, while John is far from unintelligent, he leaves the roundabout thinking to Sherlock, and prefers the more simple and straightforward approach, which can often involve violence. While Sherlock's strength is to think first, act later, John is the opposite and is useful in quick thinking situations. So I have to say, I think this is another very fitting archetype for John. Next up is the revolutionary archetype. Now when John first started out on this journey, he did want change. He was a single man with no friends, no close family, and pretty simple living conditions. He was a soldier that never came home from the war, with a psychosomatic limp, and desired something to write about on his blog. And boy did he get what he wanted. Throughout the series, he was constantly seeking companionship and interaction of pretty much any form. However, John isn't really in control of what way his environment changes. It's more like he's along for the ride. He's also more concerned with helping others directly than trying to change the world for the better. He also doesn't have the desire to be feared or respected by others that comes with this archetype. So while he may have some of the personality qualities, I don't really think that this archetype is a good fit for John. And now, the outlaw archetype. The key concept of this archetype is that it pairs with someone who wants to rebel against authority and is different. Now, John may pride himself on being a good soldier that follows orders, but this doesn't mean he's not an outlaw. When we are first introduced to John, his therapist revealed that he does have trust issues, but this seems to only be directed in terms of authority. For example, he didn't trust his therapist, and he didn't take the advice of Scotland Yard when they warned him about Sherlock. And when John met Mycroft for the first time, Mycroft made it clear that he was in a person of authority, which actually made John not trust him. I don't know what happened to John during the war, but I can't help but wonder if maybe someone higher up in the military told him to do something that he didn't want to do, causing him to reject authority figures. However. John did put his faith and trust in Sherlock, perhaps specifically because he wasn't in a position of authority. I think that because of what happened to John during the war made him obedient to authority but doesn't necessarily trust them. We've also seen John get violent at times, and is some good muscle to have when Sherlock is in trouble. This makes the outlaw a surprisingly good fit for John. Number 8 on the list is The Magician. Let's see if this fits. The Magician is the one that instigates the hero's journey, and I think this quality belongs to Sherlock, not John. However, the Magician is a good sidekick, which John definitely is, and while not a deep thinker, John is thoughtful and wise. Yes, he doesn't have a massive intellect or mind palace, but we can't really make an accurate comparison when compared to someone like the Holmes family. After all, you gotta be pretty smart if you want to be a doctor, so he does have intellect. But I think it's safe to say that John really isn't the academic type, nor is he the master of the elements around him. He does have a desire to better himself, and isn't done with the journey, but I don't think this is his primary driving force. You have missed this. Admit it. The thrill of the chase, the blood pumping through your veins, just the two of us against the rest of the world. Thus, I think it's pretty clear that Watson is the magician. Let's see if this archetype fits him better. The Sage archetype. John is more of the student than the master, but he does offer words of wisdom in the moment. He sort of acts as Sherlock's conscience, working as Sherlock's superego to direct him on the right path. He constantly reminds Sherlock to be nice and respectful. Sherlock's Socratic personality requires John to be a sort of mediator between Sherlock and the client. A sort of middle ground that bridges the gap between intellectual genius and social interaction. In short, while Sherlock does see him more of a student slash partner, my Boswell is learning. They do grow up so fast. And John sees Sherlock as a partner slash mentor. John doesn't look down on others, nor does he feel superior to anyone around him. He knows he's an important part of the machine, but he's still only a small part of it a small cog in a much grander system. He also doesn't have fear of ignorance. In fact, I think he accepts he will never be on Sherlock's intellectual level. 
I don't understand. You should have that on a t-shirt. I still don't understand. And there's the back of the t-shirt. So while he does have his moments, the sage probably isn't a good fit for him. And now it's time for the innocent archetype. John can be pretty optimistic, so I think this is a possible archetype for him. He is certainly very honest and pretty naive. He was also surprisingly quick to forgive Sherlock for faking his death, and in time, forgive Mary for lying about her secret life. And I think you have to be pretty flexible to just live with Sherlock, being constantly belittled and insulted. Yes, he gets mad at times, but he is very morally just, driven by doing what is right. He cares for others, and is a kindly fellow. Plus, he doesn't really change throughout the series. However, he does have his faults. He shot a guy without much remorse, and more or less cheated on his wife. And in his line of work, he's seen some pretty gruesome stuff. He's experienced a lot in his lifetime, and while he might be an optimist, he also isn't completely oblivious to the world's troubles. In other words, it's an archetype that's worth considering. Next on the list is the creator archetype. Now, I don't really think John is much of a creator. Simply enough, he doesn't really create anything new, with the exception of Rosie, but I think we can give a lot of that credit to Mary. Yes, he does have his blog slash books, but these are all about Sherlock, going so far that people actually begin to think that it's Sherlock's blog and not John's handiwork. Thus, he gives more of his credit to others, and while he does enjoy being useful, it's more along the lines of people using him. After all, Sherlock used him to replace his skull, showing why John picked him up and brings him along in the first place. He's not a conformist, and isn't a fan of new ideas, especially those that involve dismembered body parts in the kitchen. So again, I don't think this is a fitting archetype. So let's wrap it up with the Explorer archetype. Now, I'm not really sure if John is really all about self-discovery and self-improvement. While he does go on a lot of his adventures to be entertained and satisfy the itch for adventure, I think he's more concerned with solving the puzzle for the people, not for himself. As Sherlock says, it takes John Watson to save your life. So while he may be ready for adventure at a moment's notice, he isn't really open-minded or have a sense of curiosity. He's okay with other people higher up telling him what to do, instead of him telling others. He seems to have found his purpose in life after the first episode, so again, he's not really on a journey of self-discovery. And while yes, he did go through an emotional shift after Mary died, he didn't really change once he got back into the swing of things, or explore new options. So maybe this archetype is better suited for someone else. I thought long and hard about what to assign John Watson. And when it comes down to it, I have to say that based entirely on my more or less completely unqualified opinion, Dr. John Hamish Watson is the everyman. I know, when I first saw John, I thought he would be a natural born hero, through and through. But here's the thing, yes, he has that subconscious need for thrill and adventure, but he also has that conscious desire to have a normal life. He married Mary because he thought she was normal, and when Sherlock left, he stopped solving crimes. He's the everyman because he becomes codependent and doesn't take the active role himself. He also doesn't have a hero complex. He doesn't see himself as a hero. Mental you are. Oh, just used to a better class of criminal. And in terms of Stockholm Syndrome, I think John has Sherlock Syndrome. He develops strong feelings for his captor, and I think he often feels trapped in the relationship. Thus, I think he's a heroic everyman, but an everyman nonetheless. And if you disagree, be sure to comment down below and explain why. And also let me know what other TV show characters you'd like to see me analyze. And be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and remember, stay concentrated.